Hi, it's Russ from Adventures, uh, the UK based adventure 4x4 Trex company. I, uh, I've been watching all the uh, press releases, the uh, uh, blogs and everything about the Ineos uh, Grenadier for the last week and I did make a comment on Facebook within a few hours of it being launched uh, and, and the comment was I love the look of it, I thought it, it was everything anybody would like as an overlanding truck. My only negatives were and I'm not sure I actually mentioned the engine, I'm not a big fan of BMW engines and I'll, I'll go into that in a minute or two uh, and, and the other thing is it's not that simple you can build a vehicle you need an infrastructure you need a parts supply you know there's no point having that vehicle and traveling the world in it if you can't get what you need for it you need a backup you need a distribution network there is so many things that need to be put in place before that vehicle is, is fit for purpose really because it, it's, it's a risk otherwise um, my views on that oh, it's one of a drink of red wine tonight my uh, my views on the uh, the BMW engine are uh, based on the fact that I was involved uh, with I was their dealer principal of two Land Rover dealerships in 1994 and I, I was so excited that BMW bought Land Rover and a, lot, a lot of people were because obviously selling it to a German manufacturer was you know didn't seem right well I was excited because I thought wow some of the things that are a problem with Land Rover the risk the reliability the build quality I thought BMW is going to walk through the door I'm going to sort this out in my opinion and it is only my opinion they never did I don't know what it was but BMW never got a grasp of Land Rover and worse still the actual components they supplied to Land Rover were rubbish. The 2.5 engine in the uh, in the P38 Range Rover, well, it couldn't pull itself off a off a, a, a piece of grass. It was it was dreadful. The TD4 engine in the Freelander, it wasn't without its problems. Uh, everything that uh, you know, the, the the petrol engines, the 4.4 petrols, they had problems with heads. There were everything that you thought that BMW would fetch the party to make Land Rover this 100% quality built product didn't happen you know in fact when Ford walked in they did a better job so that's that's a problems with BMW engines are probably historical they're not probably they might not be founded now but that's in the back of my mind the rest of the vehicle the the shape of it the 8-speed ZF box uh, I personally want if it would been a manual I, I wouldn't have been interested I'm not interested in manual cars anymore and in this day and age this uh, the way we travel around the country um, you know it, automatic you know, automatic when I'm uh, leading a trek through the Western Sahara uh, and I'm looking at maps and on the radio and everything makes my life so much easier I don't want to be driving a manual car anybody who takes a manual car uh, on a trek to Morocco or the Pyrenees I just don't want to think how many times they change gear so automatic and not just any automatic that 8 speed ZF box is bulletproof it's a fabulous gearbox it's in Discovery 4s, 5s it's in Range Rovers, it's in Jeeps uh, it's in everything, it's the go to gearbox so that, that's fantastic. Then you start looking at the suspension that they've uh, put into place. Well, they're using uh, the, the right people for that. Uh, you know, uh, the, um, uh, the, the manufacturers in Austria, uh, the Pinzauer, uh, the six four wheel drive uh, uh, military trucks, they've, they've designed the G Wagon. They even used to make a thing in the 19, probably 50s and 60s called a Halflinger. Uh, Halfling was a half ton four wheel drive truck, uh, great fun, I, I, I wouldn't fit in one these days but they're still about. So all these things meshing together uh, are wonderful, absolutely wonderful and, and I can't wait to drive one and I can't wait to own one. If I knew there was one going to be available in the next 18 months I probably 
would cancel my order for a Defender 90 tomorrow. But I can't see them building them in, in that time. I'd like to be wrong, but if it's built in the next 18 months, that'd be absolutely amazing. Because at the moment, hang on guys, they launched a video, they launched all the feedback last week. It was all the bloggers in all the magazines. Fabulous. And then, hang on a minute, we don't have a factory. Put a hold on, hold on Wales, put a hold on Portugal. People have mentioned Brexit. Well, that's rubbish because at the end of the day, Portugal's still in Europe. So, and, and the engines and everything are in Europe. So the assembly in the UK, I don't think that's a problem. I think at the end of the day, in the 11th hour, Jim Ratcliffe said a phone call from Mercedes-Benz saying we have got a turnkey factory and that is the important thing, a turnkey factory. Ineos can walk through the doors of that factory in France and set up the manufacturing probably, I don't know, I'm not, a, I'm not an engineer but months and months and months in advance of Portugal, Portugal and, and, and Wales. They're not having to build a factory for a start off. You know, so everything's there. So you can understand where they're coming at. Don't slag them off for it, because it's a business decision. Right? And we're in a global market these days. It's more important to think, is the vehicle right? And yep, it's right. The shape's right. The transmission's right. Engine, if it'd been me, I'd have gone for a, a more rough and ready engine. I'd have probably gone for an Aveco engine something that you could hit with a, a 12 pound hammer and it would start. I just worry about the electronics and all the, my worries about the BMW engine. It, it's as simple as that. So I think the product, when and where it gets built, will be brilliant and I can't wait. And I, I very much doubt where Mr. Ratcliffe will be watching my video, that's for sure. But I would like to be the first UK Overland Tour Company with a Grenadier. I think it'd be a, a marvellous vehicle to set off and, and go to Morocco, the Balkans, uh, the Pyrenees, Calithia, wherever. I watched Andrew St. Pierre White's video this morning. Now Andrew, I hope you don't mind me saying this, I met him once at Donington many, many years ago. Never met him since, but I do watch all his videos and I know he, he takes a fair bit of stick for being straight down the middle and says it as it is. And I can't fault him for that. I can't, if some people think he comes over a bit grumpy or uh, he's a bit uh, uh, too forthright, well, hard luck. He's only, only doing what he thinks is best. If you don't like what he does, don't watch him. But everybody does. And I, I, I sort of have a little bit of empathy uh, with him for being a grumpy Yorkshireman. Uh, but I have never seen Andrew so excited about our product as he was on his blog when I watched it this morning. Uh, he got totally, totally excited about it. He was revved up about just about every aspect. He does he does know what he's talking about. He's an expert in his field. You might not like it, but he is. And everything he went through, I totally agreed with. And the couple of things that he didn't like was the same as me. BMW engine and the infrastructure, the backup for that vehicle. So, uh, there you go. If Andrew's excited about our vehicle, I think it's going to be good. So there you go, there's the ramblings of a grumpy Yorkshireman talking about the new Ineos uh, Grenadier. And uh, uh, don't shoot me because I have a couple of negatives, uh, Mr. Ratcliffe, but at the end of the day, uh, I'd rather be honest about it. I think the product's fantastic. Be interested to see how you pull it off. Thank you.